Good morning. I wanted to just come on and share something that was really honestly freeing for me in my business. And that was kind of understanding what revenue looks like, especially since revenue doesn't always equal income. You've got all these like gurus running around saying, if you don't spend money, how can you expect to make money? And while there is some truth in having skin in the game and forcing yourself to step up, uh, I have a little bit of a different viewpoint about building up revenue and what it looks like. Now, I know a lot of experts um, say things like, oh, you know, like make an extra $500 per month and pay off your debt. Or, you know, like even Dave Ramsey shares like the snowball effect in all of this, right? But one of the things that I wanna share, first and foremost, let me disclaim, this is super important, that I'm not a financial expert and my advice should not be taken as uh, financial advice. This is more of just something that I personally have done that has worked really well for me. But but I also see a lot of entrepreneurs as they start to have success, they splurge on huge things when it is not time for that yet. So literally they'll be like, oh, I got my first client. So I went and bought a Louis Vuitton and I'm like, yo, I waited years to get a Louis Vuitton. And I mean years. So I want to share several ways that I do things a little bit differently <clears throat> and this advice goes against like some of the people like Dave Ramsey, um, some of the kind of debt payoff experts and all of that. So there are kind of like three tiers of the revenue runway. And the first revenue runway tier is money for you. This means making sure that your bills are paid, but there's a second side of this as well as you build your business. And this is really important. And that is taxes. I see so many people getting hit with massive tax bills and they're absolutely shocked when they work for themselves. They're like, are you kidding me? Well, let me tell you, you guys, not only did we pay our quarterly taxes last year, but we also got an $80,000 tax bill at the end of the year. So those kind of things can happen. But also, you know, if when you're a freelancer and you bring in, let's say 50,000 for the year and it's your first time not getting a tax rebate, uh, it's a huge impact to suddenly get a $5,000 tax bill. It can feel like a, a punch to the gut. And so I want to share a little way that I do things a little differently. And that is on the first level of the revenue runway, I highly recommend putting aside 20 to 25% of your overall revenue to save it for taxes. And the beautiful thing is if you don't need it for taxes, awesome. Like if you're able to use deductions from your kids or whatever, great, wonderful. I'm not a tax expert, but I will say that if you save for your taxes, it's going to prevent a huge, massive heartbreak of a, a huge tax bill. I have friends who make millions per year and they got a $500,000 tax bill one year. And that can just like completely set you back if you aren't saving and prepared for it. So level one of the revenue runway is to focus on your bill making sure your bills are covered beyond all else. Um, I actually am going to teach something a little different and this is crazy. I don't recommend going to every single conference. I don't recommend buying every single software. I don't recommend joining every single mastermind because those things should not be taking the place of making sure that you and your family are paid and that your, your roof over your head is covered, that your food is taken care of. First and foremost, I know this sounds crazy, but get selfish. You should always be taking a paycheck for yourself first and foremost i know that there are like these books that go out that say like leaders eat last but i have a different viewpoint on that and that is that you are the captain of the ship and if you are about to get the ship repoed that's going to affect everyone on the ship so you have to make sure that you as the leader are being taken care of i know people who are like I've been running this business for three years and I've never taken a paycheck. And I'm like, what the heck are you still doing running that business? They're like, well, it makes several million a year. I'm like, but you're not making anything. Like if you're literally making zero, wouldn't it be a lot less stressful to literally go play at a park? Like, wouldn't that be so much less stressful and you would be making the same amount of money as you're making now. So if you are not taking a paycheck every single month for yourself, make that happen first, pull it first, be selfish as crazy as it sounds, because if you and your house are not in order, if your family is not taken care of, how in the world are you supposed to serve clients or serve your customers or show up and uh, support your team? You have to make sure that you are taken care of. Otherwise you've got a really expensive hobby on your hands. So that is revenue runway level one. Level two, 
is a little different. And this is what I like to call money for your biz. This is a time where you start to build in leverage, including software that saves you tons of time, investments that bring in money with some legwork, like lots of conferences and events and networking and more masterminds or things along that nature. This is where you're investing heavily into your business, realizing that this is an asset. But remember, we don't ever lose sight of revenue runway level one, and that is making sure that you are first and foremost always paid. That you don't have to worry about the roof over your head, the food for your kids, because guys, let me just say, if you're worried about your kids like day to day functions because your business isn't uh, paying you, that is not serving anybody right. Take care of your kids first. Oh my gosh, I feel like I could scream this and so many people teach other things that I'm like, this is so broken. Like kids should not be worried about if they're gonna have a roof over their head. So you take for yourself first, then you start to invest into your business, meaning, um, like I said, software that saves time, investments that bring in money. And now this is the third point under money for your business that's a little controversial and I don't really care. This is team that saves time. This is not the same as bringing in the top gun experts. And this is where a lot of people are gonna try to hire the top experts, the A team players, the best in the business. Truth be told you guys, there's a lot more time spent in Revenue Runway Level 2 where people are acting like they are multi, multi, multi millionaires. And in this level in your business, you should be investing in team that saves you time. That means people that you're gonna probably have to train. That means they're not always gonna be the A players, the best of the best. And you know what? That is okay. That is okay while you're scaling. Your goal is to save time. How do I recommend this? I like doing things like uh, outsourcing the things that I hate to do that it was the very first thing I did which was my inbox management my customer service those things really stressed me out and then as we continued to bring on team that saves time I didn't go search for like who is Kim Kardashian's last assistant so I can hire her or can I find someone who was trained by Mark Zuckerberg on how to be an assistant nope uh, enter stage right Kellyanne Kellyanne had never in her life been an assistant before so she learned on the job and she has saved me so much time especially with my schedule with making all these moving pieces come together this is not the time to go out and bring in 10 experts and be like you know what I'm not gonna get paid for a few months but it's okay this is time uh, to hire a team that saves time not necessarily the best of the best they are gonna require some training and I'm sorry if that's controversial actually no, I'm not. Not at all. Okay, so level three of the revenue runway, and this is really important, saving a, a, a safety net. And I feel like this is not talked about enough in business from even top experts. They don't talk about this crucial concept of having a safety net. And some great benchmarks for having a safety net for savings include, first and foremost, start with $1,000 in savings if you don't yet have that. Super, super important, because $1,000 could be the difference between having food in a month where things suddenly go crazy, right? Um, or not. Next, save $5,000 in a savings account. And this is money to never be touched. It's not for that Louis Vuitton. It's not for your spa services when you feel like just, you know, splurging. Um, you really want to have this be untouched money. And this is kind of like the equivalent of having a, a safe room when Y2K might happen. You don't touch it. You don't eat the reserves, right? Those are there to protect you just in case something happens. Maybe you end up in, in the hospital and you're not able to work for a few weeks or maybe a crucial team member leaves and it drastically impacts your revenue. Anyone who says that these things don't happen is crazy because these things can happen at any point. Maybe the coronavirus, as crazy as that sounds, affects your ability to manufacture in China. So there are things sometimes out of our control, but what you can control is that making sure that you have a safety net. But remember, that comes after revenue runway level one, making sure that you and your family are taken care of, that your taxes are taken care of, then moving into software that saves time, reinvestments into your business, team that saves you time. Then we dive into saving, right? So first is $1,000 in a safety net. Second is $5,000 in a safety net. And third, this is super important, as crazy as this sounds, have a goal of getting one year's worth of your family's expenses into a bank account. So just do a little quick calculations. How much does your family spend in a normal month? 
Now multiply that by 12. And I'm talking base, like base level. This isn't like cushy, oh yeah, well we also pay, you know, $7,000 for the, the country club and da da da. No, this is like, if you need to make it through a tough time, do you have a year set aside? And this is super powerful. This is sometimes the difference between um, potentially having a house long term or losing a house during a bad season. Or let's say you have like a, a, a really intense month or you have a breakdown or you're burnt out. Have that in place so that you can make sure that you're taking taken care of no matter what. Only then do I start recommending uh, starting to invest into things like houses or into long-term investments. Um, I recommend that once you make sure your bills are paid, does that make sense? And you have a safety net. And those things are super important. But remember, if you're buying a second house, to make sure that your family is taken care of and you guys don't have food on the table next month, that doesn't even make sense, right? That's just crazy. So I recommend, I do recommend those powerful investments. I'm not gonna say what, because it's different for every single person. And there's actually people watching this who can support you with some of those things that are amazingly powerful. But um, paying off debt aggressively, investing into other streams of revenue, then you start investing into like real wellness, like making sure that your body is really taken care of because here's the thing guys and everyone when I listen to some of these like top experts and gurus I feel like they forget about the journey they forget about like the days when you're just trying to make your grocery budget fit and they're like oh eat all organic only the top produce make sure all of your meat is like hand massage and like those things are great and they're wonderful. They're like, oh, book a massage once a week. Make sure you get your weekly facials. Are all those things great? Yes, absolutely. But if you say that to anyone who's like, I'm worried my mortgage isn't gonna get paid, that is irresponsible. So make sure that those things are taken care of before you start investing heavily into wellness. And does anyone feel me by the way on the whole like, Yo, you guys are telling me to eat organic, like super expensive groceries. I'm just trying to make sure that we make our budget this month, right? So the goal is obviously to keep on growing so that the budget isn't as much of an issue, but then wellness. Then you're gonna start to invest into a team that brings some expertise, some A players that can free up more of your time, okay? That is super important team players that free up your time. Now, this is only after all of these steps, after your bills are paid, after your taxes are saved for, after you've invested into software that can easily leverage your time, okay? So that's super important. Investments that bring in money in your business, whether it's networking or masterminds, team that saves you time, then saving, paying off debt aggressively, investing into other uh, streams of revenue, wellness, then you're starting to hire in those experts. Most people, like they're like, oh, I'm starting a business, I need experts. And I'm like, no, you have a long way to go. Learn some of this first because you will never be sad that you learned some of this marketing uh, how to, and you will appreciate your team so much more when you know that you can sustainably afford them and when you know what goes into what they do. Only then do I ever recommend splurging. Did you guys get that? So many people, like they get their first big check or their first big client and they run out and go like buy like a fancy car or they buy a Louis Vuitton or they go out on this massive shopping spree that costs a thousand dollars. I actually don't recommend splurging until all of those things that we've already mentioned before have been taken care of. And the reason for that is because I want you guys to have sustainable lives and businesses. Listen, guys, I lived in a 1200 square foot townhouse with myself, my husband, our three kids, our dog, my dad, and then my team coming over every single day. We've lived there until uh, I wanna say September of 2019. So, so much longer than anyone else expected. People were kind of actually starting to get weirded out. But why is that? Because I knew that I wasn't ready to start splurging regularly on our lives and getting a house decorated and, and more expensive bills. I wanted to make sure that we had had those things in place, the safety nets of the savings account, that we had the right team in place, that we were sustainable because it's not just about like that one time buy and now, oh, my whole life is figured out. It's about building a sustainable business that serves you and your family over and over and over again. Oh, I got an eyelash in my eye. So even for like my Louis Vuitton, I waited so much longer than most people would think. 
like so much longer, years longer than most people would expect. And the reason for it is because I know that just buying that one thing or splurging on that one thing doesn't mean I've made it, right? It's not gonna make me happy. It doesn't mean everything is figured out. You know what's really, really sexy? Building a business that's sustainable, that your family is actually taken care of with, that you're able to hire people and give them incredible opportunities, that is really sexy. That is more sexy than a Louis Vuitton on your arm. And I know that that's controversial because I love Louis Vuitton, but I'm gonna be honest guys, profitable, sustainable businesses are way more powerful and impactful than that splurge that you're kind of feeling like itchy to uh, go spend on. Um, so if you have any other questions, um, about building your business, about the different levels of the revenue runway, um, feel free to send me a message here. I'll be answering some questions later today. Um, or if you're like, you know what, I already know right now, I wanna work with you and I wanna be connected with this type of training that actually helps me to build a sustainable long-term brand, then head on over to Click for Life. I'll drop the link here. And this isn't just for people who are social media managers, but most of the people in the program work one-on-one -on -one with clients and are building for the very first time. They're building sustainable long-term brands that last beyond the surge of gurus. So feel free to head on over there and submit your application. If you're like, this is the kind of stuff that I want. I want a long-term business that sets me and my family up for life. Head on over to clickforlife.com and I will catch you guys. Okay, I need to get some coffee. Bye, everyone.